Prince Charles and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall are currently self-isolating after testing positive for COVID-19, and the pair might have to miss a royal family celebration later this week. Last Thursday, Clarence House confirmed that Prince Charles had tested positive for COVID-19 and was self-isolating. Charles' wife Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall did not initially test positive, and continued with her planned engagements last week, as permitted under the self-isolation rules. But on Valentine's Day, it was confirmed by Clarence House that Camilla had subsequently tested positive and was self-isolating as a result. Details on Camilla's health or her self-isolation setup were not confirmed by Clarence House, but a spokesman said, Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall has tested positive for COVID-19 and is self-isolating. We continue to follow government guidelines. With Charles and Camilla self-isolating, any planned royal engagements will have to be cancelled until the pair can break their isolation. Charles and Camilla are understood to be fully vaccinated, so they may be able to end self-isolation early if they can provide two consecutive negative lateral flow test results. But in the meantime, visits to other royal family members will have to be put on hold and Charles will be unable to visit the Queen at this time. Buckingham Palace has not confirmed whether the Queen has tested positive herself, only confirming last week that she did not have symptoms after it emerged she had seen Charles just two days before he tested positive. Charles and Camilla may also have to miss another family event, Charles' younger brother Prince Andrew's 62nd birthday. Although the royal family may privately mark Prince Andrew's birthday on February 19, the occasion is highly unlikely to be publicly celebrated. Prince Andrew has been embroiled in controversy in recent months after it was decided earlier this year that Virginia Jufri's civil case against the Duke of York could go ahead in the US. Ms. Jufri alleged she was trafficked to Prince Andrew at the age of 17, a minor under US law, by the late convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Prince Andrew has consistently denied all of the allegations strenuously. On February 15, it was announced the Duke and Ms. Jufri had agreed on an undisclosed out-of-court settlement in her civil claim against him. As part of the settlement, Andrew will donate to Ms. Jufri's charity in support of victims' rights. A brief attachment to the announcement letter of Ms. Jufri and Prince Andrew's settlement read, Virginia Jufri and Prince Andrew have reached an out-of-court settlement. The parties will file a stipulated dismissal upon Ms. Jufri's receipt of the settlement, the sum of which is not being disclosed. Prince Andrew intends to make a substantial donation to Ms. Jufri's charity in support of victims' rights. Prince Andrew has never intended to malign Ms. Jufri's character, and he accepts that she has suffered both as an established victim of abuse and as a result of unfair public attacks. Although the end of Ms. Jufri's legal action against Prince Andrew could be in sight, many royal commentators think the Duke's reputation will struggle to recover from the scandal and a high-profile royal role is unlikely for him in the future. Joe Little of Majesty magazine told PA he thinks Andrew will forever be tainted, stating, I just don't think he's ever likely to resume work as a working member of the royal family. I think that too much water has gone under the bridge for that and the institution of monarchy has been tainted by his association with Epstein and I just think that there's no going back on all that. Royal author Penny Jr. also told the news agency, it sounds as though he, Andrew, has finally been humbled. I think the problem with Prince Andrew is he has always seemed to display a sense of entitlement, an arrogance which might lead him to think that he could come back to public life but I think it's very, very unlikely.